Today we are going to discuss the fermenter. The fermenter is a large instrument which is used in biotechnology and in microbiology for the production of a number of substances. Uh, yeah. So, today what we are going to do is we are going to discuss the fermenter, what is a fermenter, the products produced in a fermenter, different processes and conventional fermenter designs only one or two aspects we are going to cover in today's lecture. What is a fermenter? A fermenter is a vessel that is used to carry out biological reactions on a commercial scale. The importance is that we want to make it a commercial scale and therefore we are going to produce this in very large amounts. It is a vessel or a tank in which whole cells, whole or cell free enzymes transform raw materials into biochemical products or less desirable byproducts. Now, over here sometimes we are using the entire cell, sometimes we can use the enzymes only and we can either get a product of our interest or we are converting it to something that we do not want into an undesirable product and this undesirable product which we are getting rid of would be in our sewage treatment plants. Now when the cell uses a substrate, it converts it to a product. This product could either be a primary metabolite like citric acid, alcohol, it could be a secondary metabolite like antibiotics or it could be an extracellular polysaccharide like xanthan or dextran. Now the cell, these are the products that we could be using but apart from that we can use the cell to give us some enzymes which can be carrying out the reaction. We can use it to transform. In the case of steroid transformations we use the cell to transform one compound to another and then we can also use the cell to produce single cell protein. This single cell protein can be considered as mushroom or we can even take single cell protein to be spirulina which is now being used a lot in our farm as a product for food. Now a fermenter basic function, the basic functions of a fermenter are to provide a suitable environment in which an organism can efficiently produce a target product that may be one, the cell biomass like we said in the case of mushroom or in the case of single cell protein, a metabolite, a metabolite can be an antibiotic, can be a primary metabolite like citric acid, alcohol or it can be a bioconversion like if you are using enzymes for producing uh, high fructose corn syrup, we are making it for biotransformations of steroids, all these are bioconversions. Now products produced in a fermenter can be divided into three classes, we can be making antibiotics, we could be even making something as high technical as a vaccine and insulin. So all these kinds of things are made in fermenters. Now, depending on the value of the product, the fermenter design has to be modified. So, just to give us a background of this, we have gone into low value, high volume products. You have medium volume products and you have very high value, very low volume products. Now, citric acid is an example of a product that is required in very large amounts. It has low value. Then you have things like insulin which have required in very small amounts but it has very high value and then you have intermediate products like antibiotics which are required in fairly good amounts but the cost is also uh, in between 
a very high value and a low volume product. Now in the sector 1 you have the high value low volume products which are required in only about 100 kilos per year and the cost of that product can be as much as 60 pounds per milligram and the cost of manufacture really is only a fraction of the cost of the product but the biotechnology or the upstream processing or the development eats and makes these products very costly in the case of a medium value product like antibiotics they are required in fairly larger amounts and they can cost about 60 pounds per kg whereas a low volume product would cost only about 6 pounds per kilo and if we talk about sector 1 where you talk about the high value high volume products you can see that the cost is only a fraction of the cost of the manufacturing process and over here you require very high purity and you need a lot of requirement for recovery okay recovery if you do not get it is ok but the purity has to be extremely high and this would include your vaccines and your monoclonal products would fall into the sector. Then you have sector 2 which is the medium value medium volume products where you have a lot of the cost is determined by the raw material cost and here you need high amount of purity but the recovery is of some importance over here is not so important over here and you get your antibiotics in this group over here you could be using rdna technology to produce some of these products then the last sector is the low volume high produce uh, group where you have a very large amount of the compound being produced and 50 to 90 percent of the product value is determined by the raw materials because the raw materials that you would be using will make a lot of difference in the cost of the product now over here many times we are using natural producers of these compounds to produce this you do not need very high purity and you need a lot of recovery is highly important to have a recovery of the product as much of recovery of the product as you can and examples are citric acid and xanthan gums next yeah so this is a recap of the whole thing together for you now which uh, what, uh, you have cells to do this reactions for you and you have three types of cells that we use in biotechnology to carry out these transformations reactions etc they are the microbial cell the plant cell and the animal cell next the plant cell has a cell wall the microbial cell has a cell wall as cell wall we say it is a strong protective layering around these two cells ok. But over here the plant cell has a nucleus just like the animal cell because the plant cell and the animal cell are eukaryotic large cells. The microbial cell is much smaller in size both these have a protective wall whereas the mammalian or the animal cells do not have any cell wall and they are very very uh, susceptible to shear stress we will come to this in a little while next now I can use a bioreactor for carrying out these processes and there are different ways of doing this process types I can do the process either in a batch reaction or in a continuous reaction continuous reactions can be of two types plug flow or continuous let us now go to batch in a batch reactor you have the substance intermittently being added and 
you have intermittently the product coming out. The reactor is homogeneous because there is a stirrer with a motor over here and as soon as the reaction is over the product is eliminated, uh, product is taken out, recovered and the process goes on. This is a fed batch reactor and a good example of this would be the stomach where you have one lot of food coming in, the reactions taking place inside it and it going out into the intestine. So this would be an example of a plug flow reactor. The next is the pl uh, plug flow reactor in which you have the material coming in, it passing the whole length of the bioreactor and the product coming out. Here you can see that there is no stirring, there is no mixing and the whole fermenter is heterogeneous. It is heterogeneous. That means the product, the substrate when it comes in, it is going through a number of transformations along the length of the bioreactor to give the product and this is known as the plug flow reactor. This is known as the plug flow reactor and a very good example would be a river. Now in a river one can uh, realize that the upstream of the river and the delta region of the river are very very different. Yet the river is continuous and the water that flows is the same. However, what is there high up in the mountains is not the same water as in the delta region and therefore this would be a good example of a plug flow reactor. Now we go to a continuous stirred tank reactor in which you have an inlet, you have the same outlet but over here you have a motor with a stirrer which keeps the fermenter homogeneous and therefore this content is homogeneous and the same because of the mixing that we are doing. So continuously there is an inlet, continuously there is an outlet, however, however the fermenter would be running continuously with this continuous stirred tank reactor and a good example would be something like an assembly line where continuously you are getting something out of the fermenter. When we are having a reactor design, uh, what we consider are the reactor must provide oxygen transfer or exclusion of it, it must provide heat transfer, it must provide for sterilization of the media, it must provide for monitoring and control. Today we are only going to focus on oxygen transfer and of course it must also provide for containment. Uh, these are the parts of the fermenter. Over here we will be talking about the stirrer and the sparger in details today. Next. Next. Now when we take the vessel uh, which is the fermenter, it must ensure that the bar catalyst or the cells are experience optimum, optimum intrinsic and extrinsic factors for maximum product formation. When, we, when the cells are having the best facilities available to it, they are going to give us maximum product formation and this is what we want. Okay, so intrinsics and extrinsic factors are going to be uh, responsible for the growth of the organism. When we consider in, intrinsic factors, they are limited by the substrate and they include pH, redox potential, nutritional content, antibacterial barriers and water activity. We are not going to go into all these details right away. Extrinsic factors include uh, temperature, gaseous environment and relative humidity. Now what does the bioreactor 
contain or what are the important parameters that the bioreactor must have. The vessel should be capable of being operated aseptically for a number of days and should be reliable in long term operations and meet the requirement of containment regulations. This is an important parameter. Adequate aeration and agitation should be provided to meet the metabolic requirements of the microorganisms. However, the mixing should not cause damage to the organism. This we are going to consider in details right away. Again, the amount of agitation and aeration gives rise to power consumption and very often the power can contribute to 10 to 20 percent of the total cost of production. So, one has to keep this in mind when you consider the type of aeration and agitation that you use. Uh, you have a system for temperature control, you have a system for pH control, you have sampling facilities, you have evaporation losses that have to be correct uh, contained and the vessel should be designed to minimize the use of labor so that everything can become automated. Okay, next. Now, some of the points for an ideal vessel, it should be suitable for a range of processes, but this may be restricted because of containment regulations. The vessel should be of similar geometry both at a small and a large scale to facilitate scale up operations. Then the cheapest material generally is used in the fermenter and it must be able to provide adequate facilities that are required for the plant. Next. Now, when a fermenter is designed, a number of people have to cooperate, understand what the bacteria will require and then design the fermenter. It is the house of the bacteria. The fermenter is the house of the bacteria and the microbiologist, the biochemist, the gen uh, chemical engineer, the mechanical engineer and even the economist would have to design a home adequate for that fermentation and therefore fermenters are very simple to very very complex with computer controls for um, use. Next, uh, generally bioreactors are of three groups used today on an industrial scale. They are non-stir, non-aerated reactors non-stirred aerated reactors and stirred and aerated reactors. The non-stirred non-aerated reactors are generally used for wines and beer where our anaerobic fermentations go on. You have non-stirred and aerated where you have biomasses and purines produced where you have low uh, cost products being formed and generally for highly aerobic and highly valuable substances the aerated and the stirred reactor is used. Okay, today we are going to discuss this in detail. Again for recap, functions of a fermenter maintaining the extrinsic and intrinsic factors. You have probes and recorders for recording these things and you have a system for providing optimum conditions and you need to contain substances within it. Now, in the parts of the fermenter, you have the aerator or the sparger, you have the agitator or the impeller, you have baffles, air filters, probes in the fermenter. Today, we are only going to talk about these three. Okay. Now, over here, I have shown you only the agitator or the impeller. The impeller is a stirrer which is linked to a motor and because of this impeller movement you have what is known as radial flow in the liquid and this motor will ensure that the liquid in the fermenter containing the microbes is homogeneous and this homogeneous condition is required so that the entire contents of the fermenter are having the same conditions so that 
when I have a probe measuring one parameter at one point, the same thing is experienced by the rest of the bacteria or the uh, cells carrying out the reaction in the entire fermenter. So, here you have the stirred tank reactor which shows radial flow. Now, here you can see that the sparger or the aerator is generally placed below the impeller, below the impeller and the sparger gives rise to what is known as the air bubbles. These air bubbles are large. These air bubbles are large and they hit the motor with the impeller and the large bubbles are broken down by the impeller to give you smaller air bubbles. These smaller air bubbles are required because you have an increase in surface area of the bubble so that oxygen transfer can take place better. Again, the impeller and the agitator both together work together to keep the fermenter homogeneous. Next, normally when you have an impeller, you will have what is known as a vortex formation and this vortex formation will result in liquid moving in the fermenter relative to each other without mixing. This vortex can be prevented by the introduction of baffles and these baffles are side projections in the fermenter. They ensure that no vortex forms. These baffles could either be attached to the walls of the fermenter or be a little away from the fermenter. Here it is stuck to the fermenter wall and here you can see that there are certain dead spaces formed. Whereas over here if it is away from the wall then there will be no biomass build up and this would be a much easier baffle to clean after the reaction. The importance of the baffle along with the impeller is to prevent this vortex formation which normally would otherwise occur. Yeah, here you can see the baffles homogeneous in the stirred tank reactor. Now the impellers can be of different types. You can have a turbine type impeller and you can have a marine propeller type impeller. Next, here again you can see some more pictures of the turbine type. You can have a turbine which have back sweep, a sweep back or curved blades and here you can see a propeller type or a pitch blade impeller which are the other types of blade. Now when mixing occurs in the fermenter, there are three kinds of movement, axial flow, radial flow and tangential flow. In the turbine impeller, you normally have what is known as radial or tangential flow. Next, in the marine impeller, you have what is known as the axial flow of liquid and the movement of the liquid goes from up to down. Now, I will explain this a little more in detail. In the case of the marine impeller, you have axial movement. A marine impeller is similar to your exhaust fan. The exhaust fan we put on the side of the room and the shape of the blades are such that suck the movement of the air in a horizontal direction moving it in an axial manner. Whereas a ceiling fan is a radial or an tangential flow where the air current moves in a circular manner. Now in the axial flow the cells do not experience shear stress. What is shear stress? Shear stress can be similar to be explained like as a sharpening of a pencil. Okay, When you shear off the wood from the pencil, that will be shear force which you will experience in a radial movement 
when the cells move round and round hitting the side of the wall of the fermenter. So, in the case of radial flow there will be a lot of shear stress. Which cells will experience shear stress? All cells. Now, the cells which have cell wall will be more able to overcome the shear stress. Whereas, the animal cells will not be able to overcome the shear stress and therefore, in that case, in the case of animal cells, we generally will use a marine impeller for the mixing of the fermenter. Okay? Next, uh, the spargers can be of many types. These are the holes to allow for the air to come out of the sparger. You can have a single horizontal sparger, you can have a cross, you can have a circular sparger, you can have a cross like this arranged on a rotating uh, base. So that the uh, as the blade as this sparger keeps moving, the blade uh, bubbles keep coming out in a circular manner. So there are many many kinds of arrangement of the sparger as well. Next. So what have we summarized in today's uh, talk? The substrate is converted by cells to give us products. There are many types of products that we can use, and the cells also give us enzymes can transform the, uh, substances and can produce single cell protein. Depending on the type of fermentation, you can have high value products, medium value products or high value products. Depending on the cell type, you can use microbial cells, plant cells or animal cells for the fermentation. The process could either be in a batch or a continuous, the continuous can be in plug flow or, conti uh, plug flow or continuous and today we have only considered oxygen transfer which is provided by the sparger, aerator is the sparger which is also called the aerator and the agitator or the impeller along with the baffles which are responsible for oxygen transfer. Okay.